Praise the Lord. Everybody, I said, Praise the Lord. The Lord bless you today. The Lord put His power, His anointing, resources for wonder in your life in Jesus' name. We're having the ministers' conference, professionals' conference, and it's kind of a little bit taxing to give the same message to the ministers and professionals. But I'm believing that the professionals are spiritual, intelligent, and you can take what I'm saying from the word because we have nothing to preach. Preach the word in instant and in season and out of season. And it is that word that the professional will take and apply it to himself as well as the minister that the minister will take the same word and apply it to himself herself and the lord himself the spirit of god will apply the word and make you to understand this is the way walk it there and as you do the lord will bring together everything he has ordained for your life, for your ministry, for your profession. And the Lord will bless you and bless others through you in Jesus' name. Amen. We're praying together as we start. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you and bless your name. You're a great God, a good God, a wonder-working God. You work wonders in everyone that submits himself, herself unto you. You do not force your blessing on anyone. You do not bless the people who do not want to be blessed. But Lord, we pray there will be that willingness that we want to have, want to receive, want to experience the blessing of the Lord. And that willingness, if he be willing or be obedient, he shall eat the good of the land. But Lord, we know if we are not willing, we cannot receive the goodness from you. We are asking Lord today that you impact every life, every minister, every professional, and we will be what you have ordained will be in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. And the people of God shout, Amen. Thank you. God bless you. You can be seated. As you understand, the theme of what we are talking about while we are in this conference is that we might encounter the Lord. Encounter His wonders. Encounter the supernatural. And if we have that mind, and that is why we are here, then we'll encounter the Lord in a new way in our lives in Jesus' name. Today I'm talking on one subject, and yet there are two parts to the subject. The subject is entrance and exploits through Christ in the church. You notice we say in the church, you have come from outside. You have come from belonging to the kingdom of darkness. And you have come into the kingdom of light. It's only then that we can say that you have entered into the church, the invisible church. Into the church, the militant church. Into the church, the conquering church. Into the church, the triumphant church. Eventually, in the church. And we enter through Christ. It says entrance and exploits through Christ in the church. Now, the two things there, entrance and then exploits. Those two words, entrance, means that here is the open door and then you enter and you go in. You come from outside, you are now inside. Then the second one, exploits, actually exploits. It's referring to the miracles, it's referring to the supernatural, it's referring to the great things God does through his people. Surprisingly, those two words, entrance and exploits, they are different. And 
you may have one and not have the other. Let me explain. Entrance without exploits. You may have entrance and you may not do exploits. We're told that John did no miracles, no exploits, but obviously he had entered. He was a part of the kingdom. And Jesus said, of all that were born of women, there is no, no one greater than John the Baptist. Obviously, he was an insider. He knew the Lord and he saw Jesus coming and he said, behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. He had entered, but he didn't do exploits but then there are people that do exploits this may surprise you but they have not entered they have not entered into the kingdom they are not children of god they are not recognized by heaven their names are not in the book of life in heaven and yet they do exploits many will come and say unto me in that day lord have we not prophesied in your name? Have we, done made, have we not done many wonderful works in your name? And yet he will say to them, I know you not. He never knew them as people that had entered into the kingdom of God. That's the reason why we're not just talking about exploits. We're talking about entrance. We're talking about exploits. And then if you have really entered... You have entered the kingdom by faith in Christ. You have entered the kingdom by turning away from your sin. You have, you have entered the kingdom by coming out and you have come into the kingdom. The possibility of exploits are there because he has given us his name. And he said, if you have entered, that he gives you his name and whatsoever you will ask the Lord he will do it. And so you don't want to separate in your own life, in your own experience, in your own ministry. You don't want to separate entrance from exploits. You want to make sure you have entered. And then after you have entered, you are now ready. And you want to pray and you have to, the key. You want to have the key into the kingdom. That whatsoever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatsoever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven entrance and exploits through christ in the church we're looking at john chapter 10 verse 9 john chapter 10 verse 9 i am the dome by me it's only by him if any man enter in, he shall be saved, entering into the kingdom, entering into the invisible church, entering into the ecclesia of God, entering into the people who belong to the Lord, is by salvation. It says, if any man enter in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find pasture and then he says in verse 16 in verse 16 and other sheep i have which are not of this fold which are not of this little congregation of 12 little congregation of 120 little congregation your own denomination your own congregation it says they're not of this fold them also i must bring the people that enter in is Christ that searches them out. It's Christ that finds them out. It's Christ that lays hands on them and he gets them out of darkness and he brings them to himself, the light of the world. He says, them I must bring. And then he says, this is the evidence that they have come to me. This is the evidence they belong to me. They shall hear my voice. They'll hear the word of God coming from Christ. They'll hear the mind of God coming through Christ. They'll hear what God has ordained. They'll not be people who will say, I don't want to hear. He has not entered. They'll not be people who will say, I only love the wonders. I don't want the word. They have not entered. They're not the people that say, message forget about that let them pray and i want to see miracle they have not entered those who have entered they shall hear my voice 
And there shall be one fold and one shepherd. We're looking at Mark chapter 16, and I'm reading from verse 15. Mark chapter 16, verse 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And then he says he that believeth you know you have to take the decision by yourself you have to enter by yourself it's not that you know we enter as a community we enter as corporate people it says he the individual that believes he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved but he that believeth not, even if he is baptized, if he believes not, an infant, he that believeth not, or even an adult, is come over to a new denomination. And denomination says, before we can put your name in the register of the church, you must be baptized by us. Whether you've been baptized before or not doesn't matter. You must be baptized. But if he is baptized and he does not believe, he does not believe the word he cannot enter he cannot see the kingdom of god is not a member of the family of god he that believeth not shall be damned and now after we have entered look at verse 17 uh, that's the exploits now number one is the entry into the kingdom entrance into the kingdom number two is the exploits that we do it says and this i shall follow them that believe it's not talking about apostles alone everyone that believes they've come into the kingdom and now they believe they have entered and because they have entered by faith that same faith in them and through them will now do exploits and this i shall follow them that believe in my name shall they cast out devils that the exploits and they shall speak with new tongues that the exploits in verse 18 it says and they shall take up serpents that is serpents not that they are looking for serpents in the wilderness and they are saying i want to demonstrate the power of god if any serpent any stick spiritual or natural if it comes against them they take that snake off and they throw it off and it saved they drink any deadly thing not that they are making it for sure and they are competing with you know the unbelievers who say that they can drink whatever it will not help. they're not competing with magicians but if by peradventure they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them and then it says they shall lay their hands on the seed and they shall recover when you bring everything together you have the messiah himself living on the inside of you and you have the miracle of christ and it's all that that will be going forth from you in Jesus' name. I thought our people will say great amen. amen. Entrance and exploits through Christ in the church. There are three things we're looking at today in this message. Number one, entry through Christ into his church. Entry through Christ into his church. Number two, experiences in Christ for his church. And number three, exploits through Christ in his church. Let's look at number one. Number one is the entry. entry, And that entry is through Christ and Christ alone. Christ alone. There's no other way. We don't enter by, you know, washing in River Jordan like, um, like uh, Naaman. We do not enter by just saying, Lord, Lord, because that alone does not make us to enter. We enter through Christ who calls us to repent. We enter through Christ who says, repent and believe the gospel. We enter through Christ who have heard of him, is paid the price for our sin, and we regret of, our, of the sins we have committed, and we return to the Lord, and we believe in the Lord, relying on the Lord as the only way into the kingdom of God, and the only way to the Father. We enter through Christ into his church. We're dividing this part to three uh, to three subtitles number one the evidence of separation from christ and his church the evidence that somebody has not really entered in shout christ 
he may shout amen he may shout hallelujah whatever he may attend church he may go to seminary he may do any other thing religious thing the evidence that somebody has not entered evidence of separation from christ and his church number two entrance the entrance through salvation in christ into his church the entrance through salvation not religion not working not paying money not doing any other thing that appears religious the rules and the regulations of a church does not make a person to enter we enter through salvation in christ into his church number three is the establishment of saints of those who have led the life of sinning the life of sinfulness and they become saints in the lord the establishment of saints in christ with his church look at number one number one is the evidence of separation from christ and his church it tells us in isaiah chapter 59 and they were reading from verse 2 about your iniquities have separated between you and your god and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear we need to understand that if we're still living in sin if we're habitually sinning, if we drink in sin, and if we eat sin like food, if we take pleasure in sin, if we come to church and then during the week or even after leaving church that same worship day, we go back to our sin, we're separated from God. We have not seen God. We have not known God. God is not our Father. We are not the children of God because it says your iniquities, your sins, your transgressions have separated between you and God. We might be walking with head and shoulder, might be bearing a great load of work in the ministry, in the church. If we're still sinning and you say that is your weakness and you say that is your peculiarity, that peculiarity separates you from from the kingdom of God, from Christ, and from the church of God. We're looking at Ephesians, and I'm reading chapter 2, verse 12. In Ephesians chapter 2, looking at verse 12, it says that at that time you were without Christ. At that time of sinning, at that time of roaming about in sin, at that time of doing evil, privately and publicly, at that time, you were without Christ. At that time when you were religious but were not righteous. At that time when you had the name of Christ on your lips, but you did not have the evidence of real salvation in your heart. At that time, you were without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise. The covenant of promise that I'll give them eternal life and they shall call on my name and they shall be saved and their lives will be transformed. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. All things have become new. If that has not happened, it says you are a stranger to the commonwealth of promise and it says having no hope, no hope of heaven, if you died in that condition of religiosity, if you died in that condition, you are circumcised in the flesh, you are not circumcised in the heart, if you died in that condition, you are still living in sin, although you say you are going to the best church in town, it says you have no hope of heaven without God in the world without god in the world and so there are people who are separated from the lord and it is the sin of their lives habitual sin and uh, pleasurable sin pleasant sin to them that's what separates them we're told in john chapter 8 verse 24 in, G in john chapter 8 verse 24 i said therefore unto you here is christ talking to the people 
but here is Christ. It was not motivating them. It was not pleading with them. It was telling them the fact. You need to know the fact before you get into the faith. Faith without foundation. Faith without fact is dead. You need to know the fact that you are outside before you can manifest the faith that you are coming inside. That's why he told them he said, I said therefore unto you that ye shall die in your sins. For if ye believe not, if ye believe not, you know, a sinner comes to a church and, uh, you know, the preacher preaches and uh, he doesn't say anything about salvation. Or maybe he calls himself an evangelist. He doesn't talk about sin, about repentance, about faith in Christ. And then at the end, you know, they all come forward and he shakes their hand. Welcome. You are now a child of God, sir. He has not repented. Sir, he has not believed that the Lord, and you are sure you are deceiving the man, you are deceiving that woman. It says, uh, except you believe, for if you believe not that I am he, not I and your morals, not I and your religion, I, I am he, the Savior, and the only Savior, and the only one that can give you and grant you the grace to come into the kingdom. If you don't believe that, if you're still having Christ and Jesus, Christ and talisman, Christ and religion, Christ and idol, if you don't take him as he and he alone that can save, you will die in your sin. That's what Jesus said. He said, for if ye believe not that I am he, ye shall die in your sins. Look at verse 44 there. In verse 44, it says, ye of your father, the devil, pointed serious and he identified them he said you know your life you call yourself the children of abraham you call yourself christians you call yourself followers of christ and yet he told them there are people who might think that the children of god they have entered already but they have not because jesus said he of your father the devil and the deeds the laws of your father ye will do that's the test. That's the evidence. If we're doing the deeds of the devil, if we're walking the works of the devil, if we're acting like the devil, as if you were the representative of Satan in your community, then we have not entered it. We cannot serve Christ and Mammon, Christ and satan the deliverer jesus christ and the devil at the same time he said and the laws of your father ye you will do he was a murderer from the beginning he was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth that shows the people who have not entered in yet they are murderers they may not kill the man directly but they destroy his means of livelihood you want him to go through slow death and you don't want to you know use uh, any kind of weapon but you take the joy and the happiness and the livelihood and the family away from him until the man is so sorrowful he drops dead that's those people who do that and they do not think of what they're doing to the other fellow and they're killing the other fellow murdering the other fellow by their utterances and by their action and by their whatever that shows that they have not entered in and jesus said he yeah, abode not in the truth if you come to a place and then you are telling the truth and we're preaching the word and this is the truth and there's no way we can be saved without the truth and say no i didn't i don't want that i didn't come for the truth i what i want i want a dynamic manifestation of power as for truth, as for the word of God, that I don't want. This is what I want. If you abide not in the truth, if you are running away from, I don't want to hear that about holiness, about righteousness, about sanctification. No, I don't want to hear that. There's no way you can then be in the kingdom because you abide not in the truth. You hate the truth. And it says, it says there is no truth in him because there's no truth in him. And when he speaketh, he speaketh a lie. 
he speaketh a lie. There are people that specialize in telling lies. You know why? They are protecting self. They are projecting self. They are promoting self. They think you might see something and know something that will decrease their value in your presence. And because of that, they just tell lies naturally. It's as natural to them as flying. It's natural to the bird. As um, swimming, it's natural to the fish. Because it's part of them. They have the nature of Satan. They might be religious. Forget religion. But it says, when he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it. And the father of liars. That shows those who have not entered into the kingdom. The evidence of separation from Christ in his church. Let me come to number two here. Number two here is the entrance through salvation in Christ into his church. We enter and we enter through Christ into the church. Church invisible. Church militant. Church righteous. Church that is pleasing to the Lord. We're looking at this uh, entrance in Matthew chapter 7. And we're reading from verse 13. Matthew chapter 7. Reading from verse 13. Enter ye into the straight gate. These are the words of Jesus. And he, the Savior, he knows those who are saved. He knows how to be saved. And Jesus, you, you should depend on Jesus more than the words of any man. And he says, this is so very serious and very important that if you're going to enter into the kingdom, enter through Christ into his church. He says, enter ye at the straight gate. For wide is the gate. And broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. Jesus said, the popular way, the broad way, and the broad road that accept and is everyone just as they are. They say, well, some people will tell you repent. We don't preach. They say they don't preach repentance there. Some people will say your life must turn around. We don't, you, we don't talk about turning around here. Whoever you are, whatever you are, with your bottles of alcohol, come in. And with your packets of cigarettes, come in. And with your adultery and fornication, come in. He rejects no one. Ah, that's not true. Why did he weep over Jerusalem and said, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, I would have gathered you unto myself like the chickens are gathered under the hen, but ye would not. And because ye would not, I leave your heart to you desolate. What did you say he rejects no one? Of course, he rejects the people. What did he tell the Judas Iscariot? Do that thing you want to do, but no, woe unto that man that betrays the son of man and then he'll go to perdition call him the son of perdition what do you say he rejects no one he rejects what did bible say that some believed in him but he didn't have any confidence in them because he knew their heart he knew that they had not really come in we must if you want to come in there must be repentance there must be faith in christ and he tells us the broad way leads to destruction and many there be which go in there at and then in verse 14 he tells us he says because straight is the gate and narrow is the way narrow is the way that's the lord jesus christ telling us that the way into the church the way into christ or the way through christ and the way into the kingdom of light is a narrow way which leadeth unto life and few there be that find it if we follow the multitude then if we say look at all those people there are so many and if uh, you know they, they are not uh, getting something good out of there how will there be so many like that jesus said 
the people that love the way without repentance, without faith in Christ, without a turning around, and without a change of life. Many of them, they just flock in there on the broad way that leads to destruction. And it says, the people that find the way, the narrow way, and the people that get into the kingdom, it said, few there be that find it. I pray you'll find it in Jesus' name. Look at verse 21. Verse 21. Not everyone that says unto me, Christ is talking, not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. There's an evidence you have that you have entered. And it is that now, you didn't know this before, but now you know it and you practice it because the grace of God has come into your life. We're looking at John chapter 3. John chapter 3, and I'm reading from verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, a religious man, unto him, a leader, a ruler, in their synagogue unto him he said unto him verily verily truly truly i say unto thee except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of god the lord assures us he says the entrance into the kingdom is uh, evidenced by being born again. What does that mean? When we are born of the flesh, we have the works of the flesh. And if that is the only birth we have, and we behave like, you know, we're in the flesh, the loss of the flesh, the deeds of the flesh, the character of the flesh, the pleasure of the flesh, if that's the only birth we have, we cannot get to heaven except a man be born again. Now he's born of the Spirit, and the fruit of the Spirit will show in his life. A change has come, a transformation has come, and he's not born of the Spirit. Except that happens, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Look at verse 7. In verse 7, it says, Marvel not that I said unto thee, Ye must be born again. If your desire is to get to heaven, if your desire is to live for God, if your desire is to show, exhibit the evidence that you are in the kingdom, you must be born again. Marvel not that I say unto you, religious man, religious leader, that I say unto you, those who are even trying to teach others the way of the Lord, the way to heaven. The man was not born again. And Jesus said, don't let this surprise you that you come here and you want to do exploits, you want to manifest power. And yet we say the foundation of that is that you're born again and you have a life that is committed, totally, completely, entirely surrendered unto the Lord. We're looking at uh, number three now here. Number three is the establishment of saints in Christ with his church that establishes us not as sinners, remaining in all the sins we have been committing and continuing in all the sins we have been committing and then we we'll say we're children of God. No, not at all. He expects that a new life would have come. He expects that His grace will work the wonder of salvation that leads us to saintliness and righteousness in our lives. In Romans chapter 16, reading from verse 25, it says, Now to Him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. Verse 26, it tells us, but now is made manifest by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandment of the everlasting God made known to all nations 
for the obedience of faith. You see that? righteousness and sinfulness and lead to disobedience and rebellion against the Lord. But it's when we have faith in Christ and faith for salvation and we believe him. When we say we believe him, we believe his word and we believe all his statements. We believe everything he has said and if he calls us to repentance, calls us to obedience, we believe that and then we follow after him and we have the obedience of faith, obedience of faith. If you find a man, a church man, a church woman, and all you can say in his life, all the years you have known him, is disobedience, is rebellion, is defiance of the word of God. You're looking at somebody who is in the church, is not in the physical church, in the, um, in the visible church, is not in the kingdom of God. It says we're called in all nations. We're called to Christ and we come and we have uh, the obedience of faith. We're looking at uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 3 and I'm reading from verse 12. 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, we're looking at verse 12. It says, and the Lord make you increase and abound in love. That's the evidence of coming. God is love. And we come in and we're pulled into the church that should be saturated with love. And he says now, he'll make you increase and abound in love one toward another. If we're increasing in hatred, in animosity, and in bearing grudge, and in unforgiveness, if we're bound in that, we have not entered it. That's the nature of Satan. And the nature of God. God is love. And he said that we are bound and increase in love one toward another and toward all men, even as we do toward you. Then in verse 13, in verse 13 it says, to the end, for the purpose, for the reason, he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God. That's the intention of God. That's the plan of God. That's the expectation of God. That is the desire of God. That you may establish your heart unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father, the undercoming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. We continue in the word of God. We increase in the love of God. We establish in the love of God with all the saints in Christ. Second Thessalonians chapter 3, and we're looking at verse 3. Second Thessalonians chapter 3, we're looking at verse 3. But the Lord is faithful who shall establish you. That's what he wants. He doesn't want us to come in, in Christ and then come into the church and crawl out and crawl in and crawl out. He wants us to be established that we are saved. We are converted. We belong to the Lord and we're established. Whether we're in the church on a worship day or outside the church building any other day, whether it is Sunday or it is Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday, Thursday, Friday or Saturday, it wants us to be so established that wherever we are, we're living that life of righteousness and we're established in the righteousness of God. It says, but the Lord is faithful who shall establish you and keep you from evil keep you from evil that is the evidence we have entered into the kingdom we are abiding in the kingdom uh, look at uh, verse 4 there it says in verse 4 and we have confidence in the Lord touching you regarding you that she both will do do ye both do and will do the things that we command you that the grace to do that's the evidence we have entered in and the grace to observe all that the lord himself has given unto us that is the evidence that we have entered into the kingdom and then in verse 5 he tells us and the lord direct your hearts into the love of god into the patient waiting 
for Christ. That shows us those who are outside the kingdom, outside the church, and those who have entered by repentance and faith, and they show that they remain their abide because they have the obedience of faith. We're coming to point number two now. Point number two, experiences in Christ for his church. Experiences in Christ for his church. When we say you experience something, it's like, you know, food, you've tasted it. You know whether it's good or not so very good because you have experienced it. It's like when you get to a community, you can tell in that community what operates in that community, what prevails in that community, and what you have tasted, what you know, not by hearsay, not by a lecture, but you know it experientially. That the experience we are talking about. When we come into Christ, we experience Him. We experience His grace. We experience His godliness. We experience His glory. We experience His purity. We experience His power. And it is when that power operates in us, when that peace is in us, when that purity is in us, and we feel it, we know it, we sense it, and we live by that. And the people around us can see that peace, that purity, that power, that the experience we're talking about, experiences in Christ for his church. Romans chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 1. Romans chapter 5, and we're reading from verse 1, therefore, being justified by faith. We have peace. We have peace. We have experienced peace. There is peace in our heart, peace in our soul, and peace of mind, and there is peace all around us. We feel restful. We feel the serenity. And we feel the calmness of spirit because he has justified us. He has taken away the burden of sin. He has taken away the punishment of sin. He has taken away the guilt and the condemnation. And it says, therefore, being justified by faith, we are peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Not through your good works, and not through your religiosity, and not through your tradition, and not through the name of the denomination you belong to. It says, it is through our Lord. Lord, he becomes Lord over you. And because of his lordship over you, his control over your life, now you have that peace with God through Jesus Christ. Then in verse 2, he tells us in verse 2, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace, the grace of justification that now all your sins are forgiven as you repented of the sin as you trusted in the Lord, and as you abide in the Lord. He says now, we have access by faith, entrance by faith, participation by faith, through into this grace wherein we stand. And he says, we rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Look at verse 3. In verse 3 it says, and not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. Uh, that means when we're born again, when we come into the kingdom of God, there are trials. There are temptations. There are persecutions. And it says, because we know what we've got, we weigh what we have in Christ. We have the ticket to heaven. We have the joy and the hope of heaven. And we have that place over there in my father's house. There are many mansions. And it says, I go to prepare a place for you. Because we have a place there, we look at the persecutions. We look at the trials. We look at those tribulations and we say, that's nothing. We actually glory in those tribulations, knowing that tribulation walketh patience. Then in verse 4, in verse 4 it says, and patience walketh experience experience and experience hope and then in verse 5 it tells us in verse 5 and hope maketh not ashamed because the love of god is shed abroad 
in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. Now we know that because we have entered, we have the Holy Ghost that convicted us of our sin. We have the Holy Ghost that led us into true com confession after the conviction. And then we have the Holy Ghost that assures us there is no conversion. We are brought out of darkness into the light and the Holy Ghost bears the witness in our heart. We are looking at three things here. Number one, personal salvation through repentance and faith. Number two, purifying sanctification through renunciation and faith. Number three, powerful strengthening received through faith. Let's look at number one. Number one is personal salvation through repentance and faith. In Mark chapter one, reading from verse 14, Mark chapter 1, verse 14. Now, after that John was put in prison, Jesus, that's our Savior, Jesus, that's the only way to salvation, Jesus, who is the truth, the personification of the truth, Jesus, who told everyone the truth of the word, and the truth to have the salvation of the Lord, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. What did he preach in the gospel? Look at verse 15. In verse 15 and saying, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. How do we enter? Repent and believe the gospel. Repent and believe the gospel. If anybody says... There is nothing you do. Christ has done everything. The only thing that remains for you to do is believe, have faith. That's not complete gospel. Here is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Repent ye, turn away from sin. Hate that sin and bury that sin. And then after you've done that, believe on the Lord was paid the price for you. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 20, or reading from verse 20 and verse 21. Acts chapter 20, verse 20, and how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have showed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house. What have you taught them? And what are you teaching us? And what should we receive of the teaching that you have given? And you have said you do it publicly over the pulpit. And then you do it privately from house to house. What did he teach? Look at verse 21. In verse 21, testifying both to the Jews, the religious, and also to the Greeks, the irreligious, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. That's how we get saved. Repentance toward God. We have offended God. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And now we want to come out of the condemnation of sin. I want to be converted by the Savior. Here is the way. Repent repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. He tells us in Luke chapter 24, reading from verse 45, it said, Then opened he their understanding, that they might understand the scriptures. Verse 46, it says, And said unto them, Thus it is written, almost preach as it is written. If we want to get people into the kingdom of God, we must tell them what is reaching. And then it says that thus it behooved Christ, befitted Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead. The third day, verse 47, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached. This after his death. This after his resurrection. And he didn't say, 
I paid it all. Tell them they have nothing to do anymore. Tell them uh, repentance, forget, faith, forget. I've saved them. Already I've died for them and I've done everything there is to do. He had done everything that is there to do and yet he commands us and he says go there and tell them and he said that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations beginning at Jerusalem. Second Peter chapter 3 and we're reading from verse 9. Second Peter chapter 3 verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise as some men count slackness but he is long-suffering towards what not willing that any should perish he's not willing that any should perish and yet he says if somebody will not perish look at what it says here but that all should come to repentance that is how we have personal salvation through repentance and through faith we're coming to number two number two is purifying sanctification through renunciation and faith it wants us to be saved and thank god we're saved if we have repented and believed on the lord jesus christ but he wants us not to just remain in that salvation he wants us to move forward and he wants us to have an experience of sanctification and this experience is not something we slowly 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 glide into it's not something that we'll say when um, you know a substance a present in another substance that substance becomes like this substance not that this is a specific and definite experience we have in christ purifying sanctification through renunciation and faith in first thessalonians chapter 5 verse 22 abstain from all appearance of evil we renounce evil we reject evil we throw away that evil. we turn our back on evil of any shape any size of any description abstain from all appearance of evil and now comes the prayer that paul the apostle prayed for the thessalonians that christ paid for all his disciples and that we need to pray for ourselves in verse 23 it says and the very god of peace remember we have peace at justification we had peace when we were justified by faith in Christ. We had peace when he took all our sins and put them into the sea of his forgetfulness. And now he gives us the grace to live in freedom, free from sin. And he says that God that did that, the very God of peace, sanctify you holy. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless. Already, he makes us blameless as he sanctifies us. And he says, he's praying now for the preservation of that blamelessness as we continue unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And then in verse 24, it says, Faithfully see that call it you who also will do it. He will do it in every heart. Do it in every life. And get us ready, prepared for that heaven is going to prepare for us. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, reading from verse 21. 2 Timothy chapter 2, reading from verse 21. It says, if a man, if a man, if a man therefore purge himself from these it's waiting for that renunciation it's waiting uh, that we kick away all those evil things it says if a man if a woman if a person therefore purge himself from these it shall be a vessel unto honor 
sanctified. It shall be a vessel unto honor because now the grace of God, the blood of Christ has come to cleanse him and is now sanctified and is meet and suitable and profitable for the master's use, prepared unto every good work. After that sanctification, look at verse 22. In verse 22, flee also youthful laws. Don't say, I'm sanctified, I'm sanctified. And then you're looking at things that will pollute your mind. I'm sanctified, I'm holy. And you are talking and you know living just a carefree life it says even after that sanctification it says flee also youthful laws but follow righteousness and faith and charity that's love and peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. We're looking at 2 Corinthians chapter 4 reading from verse 2 there it says but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. Dishonesty has underneath it something hidden. We're trying to hide something. We're trying to hide the facts. We're trying to hide the real truth about us. We're trying to hide what we have done. And then we talk and, you know, we're jovial and all that to cover up something. You have not renounced evil if that is your lifestyle. A person who is born again, a person who is sanctified, a person on his way to heaven, he has nothing to hide. And he says we have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. Not walking in craftiness, not handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. There's renunciation. Then there is faith in the Lord that brings this experience of sanctification in our lives. It tells us in Acts chapter 15, reading here from verse 9, I'm putting no difference between us Jews and them putting the difference between us apostles and the members of the church. He put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. If you don't believe it, you cannot be sanctified. You cannot be purified. You cannot have a spotless life, a holy life. You have to believe because you got saved because you believe there is something like salvation. You got saved because you put your heart into it and you believe he will save me. That's how you got saved. The same thing with sanctification. If we're going to have sanctification, it has to be the purifying of the heart by faith. Faith. We're coming to number three. Number three here is the powerful strengthening received through faith. The powerful strengthening that he gives is an experience, a definite experience. We're not just a floating in prayer. We're not just, as people say, we're flowing in prayer. We have to be definite. We have to be specific. Lord, this is what I need. And it is that definiteness. It is not that uh, being specific specific that gives us the experience we have of the power of the Holy Ghost in our lives. Uh, gone were the days many years ago when we uh, were younger in ministry that anywhere we went, people are praying their hearts out. They're not just depending on the preacher has paid, but in, on them on their own, by themselves, they sought the Lord and they were saved. And you could tell of the real evidence the ends of salvation. And then they went on. I'm not talking of a particular church. Deep life had not even started then. Uh, all the way from 69 to 1970, 1971, 1972. And we went to all these uh, camps of believers. And then the unbelievers will come. Uh, and then we will teach and we will talk about the definite experiences we have in the Lord. And it came from different, different denominations 
religious young people and older people and the people sought the face of the Lord they were saved and you could tell their, their lives you could tell things were different now what I used to do I do no more where I used to go I go there no more then we come back and then we would pray our hearts out and be sanctified and we will see we will know we will sense we will feel that sanctification and things change and then we came back and we said we needed the power of the Lord and at that time people received the power power of the Holy Ghost. They were strengthened in their soul, in their mind. They were strengthened in their Christian work. And then evangelism was not uh, you know, something that you know, we have to group them together. We have to motivate them. We have to push them. We have to send them forth. But on their own, as the power, the strength of the Holy Ghost came upon our lives. Then we just went out. We evangelized. We are not waiting for somebody to say, ah, you didn't come the other time and then telling to try to tell us you know if you evangelize this is this and this is this no we just had the power on the inside of us and we went out and i pray that those good old days will come back again in your life it will come back again in your family it will come back again and in the local church we belong to it will come back again in jesus name look at matthew chapter 3 i'm reading from verse 11 i indeed baptize you with water unto repentance but he that cometh after me that's john referring to jesus our lord jesus christ he that cometh after me is mightier than i who shoes i am not worthy to bear he shall baptize you with the holy ghost and with fire that's what he does he shall baptize you you know water baptism it takes place at a moment of time you surrender your body to the one who is going to baptize you in water you're not stiffening up and then you are lured into the water and you don't try to get up by yourself he lifts you up that is a definite experience and it says the holy ghost baptism is as definite as that that you have been saved you have been sanctified because it's holy spirit and is coming to dwell in a holy heart and it says he shall baptize you he will immerse you into the holy ghost and he'll do that with fire fire burns what does that mean? Look at verse 12. In verse 12 it says, Whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his flow and gather the wheat into the garner. And then it says, But it will burn, not the fire, the fire will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire you know what that means in our lives there is a lot of chaff we have a little wheat we have little fruit and then we have a lot of you know kernels a lot of chaff the chaffs are not poisonous they are not outright seen but they occupy the place where the passion the vision and the purpose and the driver should occupy and now the holy ghost comes upon your life Life, and you are baptized, you are immersed into the Holy Ghost and into fire. And the fire will burn every useless, unprofitable thing in your life. And all that remains is what is refined by fire. That the power, fire, the fire, power, and the fire that makes you now so new, so different, so powerful, more than you had ever been before. And then he tells us, us in Acts chapter 1, reading from verse 4. Acts of the Apostles chapter 1, and we're reading from uh, verse 4. It says, And being assembled together with them, he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait. I want to ask you a question which you answer inside you there. What if those disciples of Christ said, We know Christ, we've been with him, 
He prayed for our sanctification. We're seeing his resurrection. What does he mean? By do not depart from Jerusalem. People are dying and people are perishing. We're going, we're going. And he told them, wait. Why are we going to wait? We know Christ. We know the Bible. We have the Bible in our hand. And how they rush out, the church would not have been established. And the church will not have carried on until this moment. The church is here because those disciples, when they heard the Lord that he said, do not depart from Jerusalem, but wait. Wait for the promise of the Father, which saith he, ye have heard of me. It's not enough to hear. We have heard the message from Christ, but he said, wait. What if we don't wait? And the meeting is over, and then we rush out, and over here at the corridors, we're talking and talking, and we talk away everything we have heard. The church will not be strong, but the church became established, and the church became strong, and the church had a drive that no persecution could stop. Because they waited and they received the power of the Holy Ghost in their lives. Look at verse 5. In verse 5 it says, For John duly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized of the Holy Ghost not many days. Hence, verse 8. In verse 8 it says, But ye shall receive what? You know, people they think uh, they only receive shaking. And after the shaking, they don't have power on the field. They think they receive speaking in, speaking in tongues. And after they speaking in tongues, and they shake, and they even interpret, they get to the field, there is no power. He didn't say you receive tongues. Yes, tongues will come. It's part of the gift. But the real gift that he wants to give us in the baptism, in the immersion, in the Holy Ghost and fire, he says, but he shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem. That's why they were hiding. They were hiding behind, behind closed doors because they didn't want the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the Sanhedrin to see them because anyone that shows that it belongs to Jesus, they will take and put in the prison and persecute. They might even end their lives, but he said in that Jerusalem where they rejected me, where they will not have my salvation and they will not have my security, my protection on them. In that same Jerusalem, you receive power and you have the witness, you'll be the witness in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. If we are going to be effective witnesses today in the uttermost part of the earth, we must tarry, we must wait in the presence of God until the Holy Ghost comes upon our lives. It will come. It will saturate us. It will baptize us. It will immerse us in the Holy Ghost and fire. And everything that brings humidity, everything that brings instability in our lives, all the chaff, it will burn them away in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're coming to point number three now. Uh, sorry, we're coming to, uh, yes, exploits through Christ in his church. Exploits. Exploits. That means we've seen what Christ has done when he was here. But it says they tried to disturb, but they couldn't distract him from the manifestation of the power of the Holy Ghost. And now he's transferring everything he has done. He's transferring that to you. I said he's transferring that to you. Look at John chapter 14, and I'm reading from verse 12. It says in John 
chapter 14 reading from verse 12 verily verily i say unto you hey, do you remember that's exactly what he said at the point of salvation verily verily i say unto you except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of god here he says the same thing is assuredly and certainly surely i say unto you certainly certainly verily verily Truly, truly, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, he that believeth on me, not he that believes in the past, he that believeth on me every day, he that believeth on me in every situation, he that believeth on me when he gets to the field, he that believeth on me, he says, the works plural the works plural open the eyes of the blind making the deaf hear making the maimed to even grow out the limbs that have been cut off and making the lame to rise up and walk and casting out those evil spirits he that believeth on me the works that i do he shall do also May that be confirmed in your life. And then he says, and greater works than these, and greater works than these, and greater works than these shall he do. You know, people are battle with that, struggle with that for a long time. How could Jesus say that greater works than he has done, we will do. The reason is, you know, at that time, there was no record of any HIV AIDS. And HIV AIDS are very serious. And HIV is terrible. More than many sicknesses were here of today, or were here of, were heard of at that time, that were healed. And many times, you know, we didn't have the exact uh, name of cancer at that time there are many things now medical people will tell you if you go into the medical encyclopedia now they tell us that we have at least 20 thousand named identified diseases from head to toe and the things that happen is not just this limit because many sicknesses have come into the world diseases have come into the world that were not in the world at that time it says now that greater works than these shall kill you you see the way they built uh, houses at that time they might have one story here and they and that's so now we have uh, buildings that will be like 10 floors that will be like 26 floors and we have today uh, cases on record where somebody fell from the 10th floor uh, that 10th floor was not there at that time and he fell on the ground and the bones were broken and then to even gather you know the bones and all that take him to the hospital you know while they were trying to do that somebody come and the greater works because this kind of thing had not been before he prayed for him and all the bones were set everything was good and the fellow jumped up and then walked on his way and continuing his work greater works than this shall you do because there are many things happening today that were not there on earth at that time and whatever it is and whatever the challenge we can pray in the name of Jesus and the Lord will answer and you know Oh, at that time, yes, there were people that had evil spirits, and it says, How many of you? And it says, Legion, and then it says, Go out, and it went out. But you know, today there are people they smoke all these weeds and they smoke all these things, and they get into terrible, terrible things. And the initiation into secret court society that is prevalent now, there are even places where they teach witchcraft. And they teach all how people can manifest this and manifest this. And they go to conferences where they can take in powerful uh, evil spirits. All those things were not there at that time. And those things that happened today, that was leads us and launches us into greater wars that is available to be done now. You will do the undoable. 
and you achieve the incredible in Jesus name that there is in Jesus said not that you couldn't have done them if those things were here on earth at that time but because those things were not here at that time they are now here and because they are now here greater sicknesses greater situations and greater infirmities than was available at that time because they are there now verily verily I say unto you he that believeth on me the works that I do he shall do also I will do also I will do also and works greater works than these shall he do because I go to my father. And then in verse 13, it says in verse 13, And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, you know, it depends on your asking. You know, sometimes when uh, there's somebody around who can do it, who ought to do it, who will think its official work is to do that, we don't even try to do it's like you know you are very hungry but your wife is at home and your wife is the one that has the responsibility of cooking even to take some you know refreshment is the wife that should bring the refreshment to the table is the wife that should bring the water and bring the drink and since she's there the hunger is biting you and she happens not to be around at that time. And you know, you just sit down there. And you're saying, I hope my wife comes in time. My brother, that's the fridge. My brother, that's what you should take. You know how to take that. You know you can do that. But because you've given the official duty of doing that to the person who is appointed to do that, and to the person you're married who is supposed to do that, you never rise up to go and do that. What I'm saying is, once there is a pastor who prays for people and answers come, once there is a preacher who prays for people and exploits are done you could too but because that's his official duty and that's his responsibility and that's what he's, uh, he's calling therefore with all we've heard and with all we know and with all we possess we see down there when he comes back from where he's gone when he you know gives attention to all those he'll come back to me here and then he will do the exploits you will do the exploits and we don't have to wait for the official person now because whatsoever ye shall ask in my name that will i do that the father may be glorified in the son look at verse 14 if ye shall ask anything in my name what will happen what will happen if everyone having this power having this calling will rise up and do it miracles will multiply in your life Amen. in my life Amen. in our lives Amen. it will happen in jesus name Amen. an evangelist came from england and the um, students who invited him asked me that they wanted my picture on the poster because in that city, even in our country here, they didn't know that man coming. I knew the man, but they didn't, many people did not know him. And he said, if we just put his picture and his name, that people may not come. But they know you. So, we're not asking for you to come and preach, please. We're not asking you to come and hold the meeting, please. But we need your picture. Can we put your picture on the poster? I said, all right. So they put my picture there. And they put the picture of the other, of the man, the real man, the official evangelist. They put his name and picture there. And then he came and he started the crusade. Then those students appealed to me and said, because they saw your picture on the poster, uh, it's good that you sit down. You're not preaching, you're not praying, you're not doing anything to sit down there. 
so that the people will know we didn't steal your picture from somewhere and just paste it there. I said, all right. And so that night, we got there. And the official person to preach and pray, our evangelist from the UK, he was there. And I was sitting there just to show my face, that the face you saw on the poster, on the handbill, that this is the face where nobody deceived you, that's why I'm here. And I didn't prepare for anything. Because they had told me already, I wasn't preaching, I wasn't praying, and I accepted the deal. And now... The evangelist, and he didn't tell me anything. He didn't even know me as such. He knew the name because they told him, but he didn't know anything about me as to praying, as to miracle, as to exploits, and anything. And so he preached the salvation message and made the altar call. And people responded to my shock and to the shock of everyone. He said, uh, Tonight, I have a pastor here, Pastor Kumui is the one to pray for the sick tonight and i wondered in my heart look at this man you didn't tell me ahead of time to pray up to saturate myself to get prepared i was looking at him as the official i was just a participant but now he uh, called me to the public and he gave me the microphone what will i do the point is, once you think the official preacher is there, is to do it, you will not know you could do anything. So, already I'm brought on the platform. I either swim or sink. If I sink, I'll not show up in my own meetings after. I have to swim. You have to swim. And so I took the microphone. And I got there, and I said, young man there, when the altar call was made, you didn't respond. I said, that person there, look at your life. And then I began the altar call. I see if I was the evangelist. And he started getting up. And I prayed for them, and we settled that. And now I said, here we are today. Jesus is here. And the works he did, we shall do. And greater works than that shall we do. I said, that blind man there, get up. You are going to be healed. The lame one there. And then I began to mention all those problems. I said, raise up that hand. Miracle is coming your way. I didn't say miracle may come your way because I wasn't the official preacher. Don't say may, it will come. Yeah. Through you, it will come. Yeah. And then I said, in Jesus' name, I was praying as if I prepared, as if I was the evangelist. Yes, I am the evangelist. Once you are there, and once your time comes, those great works will be done in Jesus' name. And then after the prayer, the final amen, that blind eye got opened and that lame person started walking and the people were jubilating. And as a result of that, the evangelist himself, he forgot himself. He, he started taking pictures. That lame man, he said, stand up for me. And then he took the picture. And then the man whose eyes were open, can you see now? Can you see? He said, I can see. Give him something to read. And then he was taking pictures. And then he took that to England. And he showed the board of trustees of his church. And he had the largest church in London at that time. And because of that, uh, the committee and the board of trustees said, send for that man to come. And they wrote a letter to me and they said, now come and teach us about the gifts of the spirit, about power, about exploits. Because an unofficial man accepted the challenge and great things began to happen now the, the unofficial man unofficial woman sitting here before me and the one that thought she was going to watch it was coming to listen to the official preacher now you uh, listen to the official preacher i pass the rest to you 
rise up now rise up now and tell the lord oh lord office or no office label or no label an official calling or no official calling i come in the name of jesus and then you come into the exploits you ought to do for the kingdom of god open your mouth and tell the lord you are the man of the hour you are the woman of the hour and you are the one that god himself has called at this time make sure that you enter in you enter in into the church you have repented and you have believed on the lord jesus christ and you have the peace of god in your heart the peace that comes with justification a new life coming into you that if any man if any woman be in christ he is a new creature old things are passed away and behold all things have become new check up your life look at your life is there any walk of darkness there is there any secret sin there is there any hidden sin there is there any defiance of the word of god there is there any disobedience there bring it to the lord in prayer and say lord here am i i open my heart i open my mind i open everything and all that is hidden i bring them now out and lord i'm asking for freedom i'm asking for forgiveness i'm asking for the definite experience of the salvation of the lord tell the lord tell the lord he's ready to forgive tell the lord he is ready to set you free and he'll break that yoke of sin in your life he'll destroy all those works of the devil he'll destroy the habit he'll destroy the character of evil deeds in your life he'll make you another man make you another woman he'll make you a changed character a transformed character tell the lord tell the lord and say lord here am i here am i i give myself i surrender myself completely unto you tell him tell him tell him and he will say he is the savior whosoever shall call on the name of the lord shall be saved whosoever whosoever a, a terrible sinner habitual sinner a disobedient rebellious sinner that you've been in the past and now you are coming to the lord and you are saying lord here am i here am i i want a change of heart a change of life a change of character let him do it right there let him do it right there whosoever 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 shall call on the name of the lord shall be saved if we cover our sins will not have mercy but if we confess and forsake if we say lord i come i come with all my heart and with all sincerity lord i come that's how he forgives and then you repent you return and you're restored unto the lord and you say all those evil things all those sinful things all those bad habits i reject i throw away from my life lord i want real forgiveness and total freedom a change of heart a change of life a change of personality a change in the direction i had been going lord i surrender lord i surrender lord i surrender let him take you and make a change in your life come from outside come from separation from christ come away from that evil deed and evil habit in your life and say lord here i am lord here i am lord here i am lord here i am do only what you can do and change me from the inside and transform me from the inside lord i want to live a new life once i leave this place today better life righteous life a clean life that all those old 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 racks of garment that i put in put on myself i want everything to be totally removed so i can have real definite experience of salvation and now lord i renounce every hidden thing of dishonesty i renounce all those evil acts 
evil thoughts. I renounce all those evil initiations. I renounce everything that is not present, pleasurable to you. And Lord, by faith, I want a sanctified heart. By faith, I want a sanctified soul. By faith, I want a sanctified inner man that there will be a totally, completely, entirely, spotlessly, clean, holy, purified heart. Tell the Lord he sanctifies. He paid for it. He prayed for it. And he makes it available. Available for you. Available for everyone that will ask. He will sanctify you. I've seen from all appearance of evil. And then the God of peace. Who had given you peace at justification. Who had given you peace at salvation. The God of peace will sanctify you wholly. Sanctify you entirely. Sanctify you thoroughly. That your whole spirit and soul and body will be preserved blameless until the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and faithful is he who has called you. Faithful is he who has called you. He called you to repentance and you have responded. He called you to renounce all the deeds of darkness and you have responded faithfully. See who has called you. He called you to salvation. He's called you to sanctification now. And he will do it faithfully. See who has called you to service. And uh, he will do it. Tell him. Uh, tell him from the depth of your heart. That you know. That without holiness. No man. No woman. No one. We'll see the Lord, but with that conviction, and you know, He can make you holy through and through. With that conviction, you come to the Lord and say, Lord, I come. Everything that will be pulling me down, pulling me down, pulling me down, I reject. I throw away. And I want your sanctifying flame to burn everything that shouldn't be in my life and tell the lord he saves tell the lord he sanctifies tell the lord he baptizes in the holy ghost he empowers us in the holy ghost and he'll baptize you of the holy ghost and fire the fire of heaven that will burn every chaff in your life. The fire of heaven that will destroy everything that makes you shallow, ordinary, not having what it takes on the field. And now he invites you. And he says, don't think of the official man. Don't think he is there and is there for exploits. You know you are there and you are there for exploits. And there's the generation of those people that believe in him. And then he says, the works I do, they shall do also. And greater works than these shall they do shall he do because i go to the father tell him not by power not by might but by my spirit says the lord not by feeling not by human physical religious activity but by my spirit tell him depart not from jerusalem but wait for the promise of the father 
verse you have heard. John indeed baptized you with water, but he, the Christ of glory, he, the one who has gone to heaven, sitting in on the right hand side of majesty on high, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost, and he shall receive power, 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 inner power, power. Power with courage, power. Power with spiritual stamina, power. And ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. To hear the message is one thing. Now to have the power of the Holy Ghost in our lives, that's the real thing. Tell the Lord, a lot is ahead of us. A great work ahead of us. An important work ahead of us. Evangelistic work ahead of us. Our calling ahead of us. And it says this is the power we need. This is the power we need. So that that power will be manifested through you, through us, through the brother, through the sister, power. Tell him. And then you'll be his witness. In Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, to the uttermost part of the earth. <clears throat> Give yourself to the Lord. Surrender yourself to the Lord. And say, Lord, here I am. Power. Let all this weakness get out of my life. Let all this timidity get out of my life. All this fearfulness get out of my life. Let unbelief depart. Come in faith and say, Lord, here I am. Feel me. Immerse me. Deep me in the Holy Ghost that brings power. Incredible power. The power that does the impossible. Power from heaven. Power of the Holy Ghost. Power with great irresistible anointing. Let it come. Let it come. Let it come. And then you'll go out in that power, of that power, doing the works of Christ and greater things than he did when he was on the face of the earth.
In Jesus' name we pray. People of God, servants of God, who are going to do exploits from now and greater works than you have ever seen before. In Jesus' name we pray. The faith to receive, the way and the faith to experience, and the faith to go out and do exploits in the name of the Lord. The Lord grant it unto you in Jesus' name. Raise up those hands. Father, we thank you for your word. Your word the same yesterday, today, and forever. Lord Jesus, we thank you. We magnify your name. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. The same condition for being saved, being born again, coming, entering into the kingdom. At that time in your days, the same condition you give out today. And I pray for everyone that you have heard the word of God to rise up. To leave all their sins behind and leave darkness behind and leave habitual sinfulness behind and rise up, return unto you and enter through Christ the door into salvation. Grant everyone in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that the life that will not play religion and then go to hell. The life that will not play churchianity instead of Christianity and then perish and go to hell. I pray the heart that has a change, a transformation, a new life, and the grace that comes and makes us to hate all the sins of the past, Grant to every one of us in Jesus' name. I will pray, Lord, after that salvation that brings new life in Christ, that brings freedom from sin, that brings a character, the character that reflects that we have been with Christ. I pray, O oh Lord, that grace, that faith, that experience, grant to everyone in Jesus' name. The sanctification experience that makes us to love holiness, accept holiness, believe holiness, preach holiness, and live a life of transparent holiness and sanctification Give to everyone in Jesus' name. And our power, power from on high. Lord, you don't want weaklies in the service. You don't want us to remain the way we have always been. You want us to have power. Power we will have. Satan doesn't want us to have power because it will hurt his kingdom. And the people who are for Satan, they don't want us, the church, our power, because it will put them out of service. Lord, we pray power from heaven. Power with heavenly fire. Power irresistible. Power with courage. Power with fearlessness. Grant unto every brother, every sister, every preacher, every pastor, every, every Christian worker, Every professional in Jesus' name. If we're going to turn anything around in the world, the world of corruption, the world of evil, if they are not going to overwhelm the church, swallow the church up, and also submerge the church, the ministers in the church, the workers in the church, the members in the church, the believers in the church must have power. Lord, all the days of weakness are over. Amen. All the days of trembling before the enemy, all those days are over. Amen. All the days of just coming in and going out, the same as we came, all those days are over. Amen. I pray, Lord, open the doors and the windows of heaven upon your people today. Amen. 
let the rain fall. Let the rain fall. Let the fire burn. Burn every chaff out of our lives. And now, Lord, we need Elijah today. We need the Moses in Egypt today. And we need all those, the Paul of today. We need all those speakers of today and we need your power saturating our lives and going everywhere doing exploits make it happen to us in our time in jesus name power 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 upon you my brother there upon you my sister daughter there upon you workers upon you attendants upon everyone power today in jesus name and lord like you empowered something i began to move in the field you empowered gideon he began to do what you called him to do and you empowered philip he was not even an apostle and he went to samaria and all those places tasted the power fire of the lord i pray that power comes upon everyone right now in jesus name Amen. we're not weak anymore Amen. we're not timid anymore Amen. we're not trembling anymore Amen. brother sister go forth in this thy power Amen. the devil will not stand before Amen. you evil spirit will not stand before Amen. you all those parts of darkness, the people who are waiting and they're saying, we know, we, we know what to do to hinder him. Nothing will hinder you now. Fire will go before you. Fire will follow you from behind. Fire will surround you. And no trick of the devil and no kind of the devil, whatever the devil will do, will ever get to you. The fire, power, the power, fire will burn them up before you get there. Go save souls. Go heal the sick. Go raise the dead. And the power that walks in Christ will walk in your life. Lord, confirm each in every life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because we know it is done. In Jesus' name we pray. Now I have power. The Lord confirm it in Jesus' name.